The Vite and the Lost? But why now? After all this time. Why what now? No. I'm not sure you'd believe me if I told you. After all we've been through, I doubt there's anything that could surprise me at this point. <laughs> all right then. Rouse Joshua and meet me in the mess. We'll talk there. I see we're all here. So, what is it this time? I'm not sure yet. The letter delivered to my chambers omitted a few crucial details. Do we know its provenance? That was one of the details it omitted. But whoever the sender was, it seems the dame held them in high enough regard to point them in our direction. The dame? Well, she's not one to waste our time. Important might be an understatement. If the letter is to be believed, Leviathan's dominant is in danger. Leviathan? So the Warden of Water has finally returned. What has it been? A hundred years? More. The lost moniker dates back at least that long. Even our venerable lawsman would not have been so much as a glint in his father's eye when last the mighty serpent brought his crushing waves to bear upon the realm. But why the gap? I oh, know it can be a few years before a new Dominant's born. Should the Dominant of Water's bloodline have been severed somehow, it could have prevented a new Dominant. But if one has awakened now, every nation in the realm has lost its Dominant. If word gets out that there is still one to be had, they will stop at nothing to claim it for... And the twins will be at war again. Just when humanity most needs to... Did the letter say anything else? Only that if I wish to know more, we must meet... And that the Vale can arrange a meeting. Hmm. <laughs> Famous last As am I. Thank you. And Otto? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I shall leave the Invincible in your capable. The veil it is then. And looks like you've got first. But enough talk. Fancy a peek behind the veil, my lord? I'm looking for a Layla. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, we're not here for your services. We simply want to talk. What you do with your time is up to you. <sighs> uh, we hear about the letter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Among other things. Look, I'm just the messenger. There's only so much I can... Specifically? A location. North of town, on the shore of Isla Feist Bay. There you'll find a tent, and the woman who can answer your question. And that's all? Actually, one thing, there's more than flowers in the meadows, the... Does anyone else think it's strange that this woman should prefer to keep to the outskirts of town? Not if she realizes the value of the information she's party to. And the danger it puts her in. I haven't seen any of those beastly blue-eyed things. Do be careful.
tent is where Layla said it would be. Yes, but who awaits us inside? Is. The boat. No prizes for guessing who that belongs to. are still warm. So you're Sid. I suppose I must be. Which means you have me at a disadvantage. Apologies. I am Shula, tributary of Mesidia, final haven of the Moats of Water. The Moats of Water? The very tribe into which it was believed Leviathan's Dominant was born, a people notable for their sapphire eye. Yes, that would be impossible, since the tribe famed... Vanished. Was exterminated. <laughs> Despite the best efforts of though we've managed to keep that fact hidden from good Grieger's faithful for over a century. Along with Leviathan's dominant. That wave out there. What do you know of it? The surge. Only that it's been there a long time. Since the fall of Drake's eye almost a century ago. Some claim the two are connected, but... So in other words, you know nothing. Not that I'll hold it against you. The wave was raised by Leviathan in an act of rage, moments before the waters were stayed, and the icon and its dominant bound within. And you want to rescue him? You see, a little bird told me about a certain outlaw with a sea, and ours is about as unruly as they get. For years, we've searched for someone just like you. What exactly did your dominant do to warrant this punishment? What did he do? He committed, but he deserves a better fate than the one my people forced upon him. He deserves to be free. As do we all. Very well. Far-fetched though your tale may seem, something tells me you speak in earnest. So we will do what we can for your dominant. But first, you will tell us everything you know about him and the means of his imprisonment. I can do better than that. I can show you. Care to take a trip across the bay? My people await you there. Lead the way. Right, you might want to hold on to something. We're coming up on the wall, and passing through can take a bit of getting used to. I don't see any wall. Of course you don't. That's the point. It's a glamour woven by our ancestors to keep our village hidden from prying eyes. But don't take my word for it. Watch. of Bacchus wine. Clive, the sky. It's blue, but how is that possible? 
You do know what a glamour is, don't you? Ours just happens to work both ways, and a good thing too. I wouldn't fancy staring at those sickly clouds every day. And that concludes our little voyage. We're here. It's a long slog to the village, and a hard one. I uh, hope you're up for a climb. think we'd arrived, did you? The village isn't up here. It's on the other side of the mountain. Of course it is. Well, this isn't at all foreboding. Watch yourself, Sid. This path can be treacherous. If not for the sheer drop, then for the beasts who prowl it. Thank you for the warning. And please, call me Clive. Sid is an alias. You will be pleased to learn, Lady Shula, that I have no such aliases. Is that so, Lord Margrace? It's all the same to me. I see you carry no crystals. Since when did a bearer ever need crystals? But then, where is your brand? Waiting for me in Sunbreck, if I ever get careless. <laughs> then it's in for a long wait. Almost at the summit. From there, you'll have a better view of our home. If 
few have ever set eyes on what I'm about to show you. Just so you know. This is not what I expected. Welcome, my friends, to Mercidia. <laughs> So, so... Alive. How I'm sure you have plenty of questions, but it's been a long journey, and I expect we could all do with a rest. Our humble village is only a short way from here, if you'd care to accompany me. Let's get ourselves in front of a fire, and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Beautiful, Shula. And we aim to keep it that way. Are those stones glowing? That's one of the cairns which maintain the glamour. Steer well clear. spared ourselves the mountain crossing by landing further north? In clear view of the bay. On evening tides. Does morning's light return? Open the 
gates! The tributary is home! Size of that dog? All right now. Back to your duties. You'll have to forgive my people their curiosity. We don't get many visitors. Or any, truth be told. And we are honored to be the first. This is quite extraordinary. Like stepping into another world. So do you believe me now? But how did your people chance to settle here in the north? Unless I am much mistaken. The moats of water long called the coasts of Southern Ash their home, until Drake's Horn fell and the Blight forced them ever inland where- We met our doom, along with our dominant. I see you've read the Gregorian Church's account, but perhaps you'd like to hear ours. That building over there is the Witten Hall. It's where my people gather to discuss matters of import. We can speak more inside once the place is ready to receive you. It shouldn't take long, but you're welcome to explore the village while I see to things. Thank you. We'll do just that. That'll be them then. Look. How long do you think this? Seems like one of the cans was the step. The poor things are as clean as. So what do you think of our little haven in the woods? It might not have all the comforts of a southern settlement, but at least it's ours. And there's a lot to be said for that. It can't have been easy keeping this place a secret. Not easy, no. We've dedicated our lives to maintaining the glamour that conceals us. Us and Walius. This man, Walius, is he Leviathan's dominant? That's right. Though he's no man, Walius is still a baby. A baby? Forgive me, but you said that the Dominant and his Icon were bound inside the Surge almost a century ago. That would surely make him older still. It would, if he'd been allowed to age. But the spell robbed the poor bairn of even that. I'm sorry? Walius was the son of my great-grandfather. Leviathan awoke within him almost immediately. But instead of allowing the lad to live out his life as a valued member of the community, my ancestors sought to put his power to other uses. Sadly for them, the Icon sensed their treachery and summoned a wave so large it would have swallowed the entire village if my ancestors hadn't stopped him. Then it is not the surge that binds the child, but time itself. Yes. Forgive me. I'm still not sure I understand. I'm not surprised. It isn't the easiest thing to explain, which is why it might be better if I took you to see him, show you exactly what he has to endure. That is why we came. Then let us be off. There's a road that leads north from the village. It'll take us right into the surge. Are you bound for the wave, tributary? We are, Delina. Have you spread the word about our guests? I have. Everyone knows to treat them as family. You shouldn't have any trouble now, but just in case, I would have you accept this symbol of our people. That's very kind. I look forward to meeting the family. The feeling's mutual. Should the tributary be indisposed, feel free to ask me any questions you might have regarding the village and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. Then I bid you a good tide. 
Our storehouse lies across the bridge. If you're short of supplies, you may find what you need there. Though we will have to ask you for recompense, poor as we are. The poor things are as pale as ghosts. Tributary sees and those outsiders. Enough to welcome them into our office. Did you want something from the stores? The tributary told us you might, and that was to share what we could with you. But we were meant to be taking a full inventory, and I won't know for sure what we can spare till it's done. Oh, sorry, but you'll have to wait till my daughter gets back, whenever that may be. Close enough. Thank you very much. Just because the tributaries put their trip. Uh, Sid, you are Sid, aren't you? I wonder if you could help. With what exactly? Oh, nothing too troublesome. Do you know my husband, Pavart? He's the village smith, among among other things. Anyway, his name day is not far off, and I wanted to make a gift. He's a craftsman, you see, and. He's been fretting about running low on the flowers he uses for dye making, so I would. Uh, would Perhaps, but it can't, for reasons I can't go into. Please, I know it sounds daft, but I'd be ever so. Which flowers does your husband. The sweet little blue ones that grow around the fount. Elder's blessings, they're called. We use them to dye our fabrics so we we'll always feel close to water like they are. You don't need to go to the trouble of picking them yourself, though. Just speak to the field hands and ask them to share their harvest with you. T Two basketfuls. I'm not arguing. Excuse me. Pavard's wife tasked me with collecting some for her husband. Ah. Werda wants you to bless her better half with the fruits of our labor. Go on then. Give the old fool something to squirm about. I'm sorry. Ah, don't worry about an old fool, Pavard may be. But if you come bearing gifts. I'm. Um... Thank you. Forgive my presumptuousness, but the smith's wife has asked me to make her husband a present of some elder's blessings. Wow! I have... It is. They really are beautiful. Aren't they just? Though that's not the only reason they have a special place in our heart. Legend has it that when our people fled from A and as they wandered high and low across the twins, he'd plant them wherever they stopped for water. Every elder since has done the same. So when we finally put down roots here in Mesidia, the flowers did too. Two basketfuls. Time to visit Pabat. <sighs> oh, 
What do you want? Your wife asked me to bring you these flowers. <sighs> that woman. Come out. I know you're there. Would either of you care to explain what's going on? I'm sorry. I, it's just my husband can be a bit standoffish at times, and I thought this might be a good way for the two of you to get acquainted. What with you being a swordsman like and him being the only smith in the village? It'd be a shame if you couldn't turn to him for help. The only reason he couldn't turn to me for help is because I had my hands full with all the orders you lot dumped on me. I'm pretty much done with them now, though. But, for the record, the tributary said that we were to lend you outsiders our aid, and that's exactly what I was planning to do. With or without my darling wife's meddling. Still, here we are. Acquainted. So, if there's out you need, just bring us a mat- All right. All right, then. And tar for the flowers. I was running low. You use them for dyeing, I hear. Aye. Crush the petals and it makes a fine and lasting blue. We use it to stain the cloth for our tunics and pennons. To remind us where we come from, like. As moats of water. Children of the sea. That's right. The pattern, too, was left by our ancestors. The ceaseless rill, it's called. It symbolizes the river of our tribe, with the strength of Leviathan running through it. And no matter how that river has ebbed and flowed, changed its course. The flowers have always been with us, growing on our bank. <clears throat> I should get back to work. If you need something crafting, let me know. I oh, will. It was a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Wasn't it, Jess? Have her hide when she gets back. Oh, sorry. I was leagues away. How can I help you? If you're after something from the storehouse, it's actually my wife you'll want to talk to. She will have to charge you for the goods, though. Not that we'd fleece you or anything. It's just, you know, I understand. Saying that, she might not be able to get anything down for you for a bit. Ah, oh, right. She's got her hands full with the inventory, you see. It should have been my daughter's job, really, but the willful little rills decided to make herself scarce. Oh, the heavens only know where that girl's got to. If you'd like me to keep an eye out for her. Oh, no. I couldn't ask that of an outsider, could I? You wouldn't mind? Of course not. She won't have gone far, will she? I hope not. But I've scoured the entire village for her and come up empty-handed. <laughs> Can't help thinking she might have gone on another one of her little adventures. Ah. A free spirit, is she? Aye, that she is. Can't get her to sit still. Especially once you heard you lot were on your way. Outsiders! You should have seen her little eyes light up. Oh, if she wanted to watch you arrive, she should have made for the low gate where you first came in. The guard there might have spotted her. Maybe you could ask him. Uh, Ruka, her name is. All right. I'll let you know if I find her. Sisters. Excuse me. You haven't seen the storekeeper's daughter, have you? Little Ruka? I have, as it happens. She went out through the gate not long ago. Out of the village? Aye. She does it all the time. There's a path off to the left which leads down to the river. Nice little spot, that. And safe as you like. The beast of the mountain don't dare come so close to the village. That's where she'll be. Go and have a look if you don't believe me. Oh, well. This must be the path. It's you! I've 
been looking everywhere for you. You must be Rooker. You know my name? Can you lot read mine? <laughs> Your father asked me to keep an eye out for you. You left without telling him where you were going. He was worried. But I went to look for you. Well, now you found me. What do you say we head back to the village and let your father know you're safe? All right. And on the way home, you can tell me all about the world beyond the wall. I want to know everything. <laughs> everything might be a stretch. Thank you for bringing her home, and uh, sorry for the trouble. Oh, no. It was a pleasure. Daddy, did you know that there are villages ten times as big as Haven in the outside world? Ten times! Cities, they call them. And in these cities, they have great big walls and towers and castles. Oh, <laughs> to think I was worried. You can tell me all about the outside world later, sweet pea. Now go and help your mum with the stores. All right. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with her questions. She uh, has a lot of them. One of the big ones being, what are the people beyond the wall like? Reckon you've made a good first impression. Are we the only ones she's ever met? That you are. The rest of the world can't know we're here. So we'll have to be very careful who we're letting in and out. A few of us might make the occasional trip to shore for supplies, but for the most part, we'll make do with what we've got, including what the old northern has left us. Yes. He built on top of the old ruins, didn't he? Well, they make for fine foundations. Their masons clearly knew what they were doing. That's one thing we don't have to worry about. <laughs> oh, it's everything else that's the problem. Medicines, metals for tool making, anything like that. We have to dress up as traveling merchants and make a trip to the outside and pray to every cloud in the heavens that nobody sees through us. Uh, which explains why you need Gil. Aye. And now Rook is back, my wife should be free to assist you with any potential purchases. So please, do make good use of our stores, because we fully intend to make good use of your coin. <laughs> I'll be sure to keep my purse strings loose. for bringing me daughter back. I don't grudge her looking for adventure, but she's got to pull away like the rest of anyway. Now we've got the inventory done, I can attend to my own tasks, like seeing to our visitors' needs. So, what's the role you want, Ed? When you've decided what you want, just let me know. May it serve you well. You're sure you need it. Here you are. May it serve you well. Well, uh, if you're sure you need it. Here you are. Very well. What do you think the Yes. Suddenly, there were curves everywhere. There's a 
pair of ships just up ahead. Ships? But are we not still leagues from the shore? The quickest route to the surge is due east, past the second galley. Shula, how did these ships come to be here? What do you imagine happens when an icon of water gets angry? Really, brother, did you have to ask? Tonberis. Foul creatures consumed by their hatred for everyone and everything. Smell the sea. It's not far now. How will we reach the surge? We'll follow the coastline north. There's a bridge that'll take us across to the cape. What prevents the surge from being reclaimed by the sea? And Walius by his people. You said before that the child is bound within the surge. But you've yet to tell us how we're meant to reach him. I trust we won't have to hold our breath. No. The surge wraps around the cape without engulfing it. If we continue to its tip, there is a path down to the seabed. And the wave's origin. All right. It won't be the first dominant we've met at the bottom of the ocean.
It's not much further now. The path seems well kept. Do you and the villagers often come this way? Only me. Once every new moon without fail. It is my duty both as village elder and Walius's descendant. But surely no one blames you for what happened. Why should you bear the responsibility alone? You misunderstand. I do it because I want to. To show him that he isn't alone, and that there are still some of us who would see an end to his suffering. Suffering you will soon witness with your own eyes. The forest grows quickly here. Left unattended, the path would be reclaimed in a matter of moods. Does the light point the way to the child? It does indeed. Look at all the droplets of water suspended in midair. Where they have remained untouched by time for 80 summers. It's... it's not right. No, it's not. ahead. Down in the center. Follow me. forget my first priming. The fear. And I was old enough to understand what was happening. One can only imagine how this poor child felt. He is the victim of an unforgivable sin. Committed by people who saw him as nothing but a means to an end. He must be so frightened. Then I'll ease his burden. You don't mean... I'm not going to hurt him. Contrary to the tales, I don't go around killing dominance for no reason. What if I told you there was a way to remove Wallace's icon? I tell you, you were a madman. It's hard to believe, I know. But it can be done. Oh. It isn't without its risks. Part of the icon remains no matter what. So, it might still come to violence? I don't know. It depends on the dominant. I've seen things end well, and I've seen things spiral out of control. But I do know one thing. If we turn our backs on this child, there will be no end to his suffering. And I think that a worse fate than the alternative. Don't you? Very well. Do what you must. And whatever happens, I will own the consequences. Bear the weight.
I think so. I can feel the icon inside me. But something's wrong.
Is everyone all right? He seems calmer now. You said Walius was frozen in time. But he knew we were here. How? I... I don't know. He's never reacted to anything or anyone. Until now. The child has been bound for nigh on a century. If he has been conscious from the first, we must remove the seal at once. It's not that simple. I wish it were, but... There's more to this tale. It would be better if I explained back at the village. I see. Then let's return before it gets dark. I'm sorry, Walias. I will make this right. So, part of Leviathan is inside you now, is it? Does it hurt? No. Not anymore, anyway. Good. Because I still have need of your strength. If you want to know the rest, we should head to the Witten Hall. Of course. To understand the spell which binds Walius, you must first know who we are and what drove my forebears to commit such an atrocity. This tapestry is our story, the one that brought us here. After generations of wandering, my people sought refuge in Northeastern Storm some 170 years ago. But in exchange for our safety, the Gregorian Church demanded we renounce our faith and branded us heretics when we could not. To be exterminated as a lesson to others. And so was it chronicled in the Imperial histories, for anything less would have made the Church seem weak. Yet a handful survived. The few who did fled north and west and in doing so, discovered two things that would forever shape our fates. The first was an old legend, revealing how to make your very own Mother Crystal. I've heard that one before. Yes, yet it gave them new hope, however false. Our ancestors convinced themselves that they could recreate the divine, if they could only find a strong enough heart. A living being capable of channeling torrents of ether. And the heavens provided. A dominant warriors. They'd stumbled across a nostrum in an ancient ruin, which they believed could provoke a sudden outpouring of a creature's ether. They meant to enrage his icon. Leviathan would have destroyed everything, had our people not made their second important discovery. A means to stop time itself. Where did they find that? The Northerners had no such magic, so they would have used them. When our ancestors first arrived, the land was uninhabited, save for an old witch who lived on the highest peak. Her body had been consumed by the curse a cruel payment for her long years of service to the Northern Thanes. So desperate were they to prevent the fall of Drake's eye, they'd forced her to devise a spell to stop time. But Drake's eye did fall. It did. When she finally perfected the necessary magics, it was already too late.
As punishment for her failure, the Thanes exiled her to this forsaken place to live out the few days she had left. Knowing her suffering, our ancestors cared for her as best they could, and in return, she gifted them her spell. That even though she should die, her legacy might live on. So armed with both the knowledge of the ancients and the secrets of time, our ancestors settled upon an ambitious plan. They would create a new Mother Crystal and enchant it that it might endure for all eternity. Thus would our people's wandering, our suffering, finally end and prosperity visit us once more. And all it would require was the sacrifice of a single child. A small price to pay, or so they believed. Another victim of man's blind reliance on the Mother Crystals. So we know the seal source. How do we break it and restore the flow of time? Do you recall the Dome of Light on top of the cliffs to the west? Inside lie the ruins of an old temple. It was there that the witch built the Vare, a conduit of sorts that channels her remaining ether into the surge. But it's been a long time since anyone set foot in the place. And now there are others who claim it as their own. Then we shall go prepared for a fight. That said, it may be best if one of us stays behind. You think the village could be in danger? We saw the ether flow from Walius in all directions, but only encountered a single familiar. There will be more. And should even one make its way here, I doubt the walls could hold it back for long. Then I shall stay. The Phoenix will see your people safe, Tributary. You have my thanks. Very well. We should depart at once. I fear time may no longer be a luxury we can afford. Vare is not easy to find. We must first head north and then west, deeper into the forest. Hail, stranger. Are you a rider? By I am. Oh, I can smell. And not just any stick. If I had a guess, I'd say your bird eats only the finest greens. <laughs> Ambrosia, eh? Well, she's tall. You're joking. You've got a white chocolate. I have, yes. I suppose they are rather rare. This I've got to see. Can you bring her here? I would if I could, but I doubt Shula's skiff could hold her. Me dad's got a boat. And he's very chocobos before. It'll be perfect timing and all. He's preparing for a trip beyond the wall as we speak. I'm sure he'd help you if you ask. He would. Well, I don't suppose it would hurt to have Ambrosia around. All right, then. He'll be in the storehouse on the other side of the brook. Tell him Manda sent you. Oh, I never should have let him go alone. things. <laughs> you one of the outsiders, then? I am. Shula invited me. Are you Manda's father? I am. <laughs> Got you running errands for her already, has she? She's asked to see my chocobo, but I'd need your help and your boat to bring her here. <sighs> Or you could just say it no. Honestly, that girl and her birds shall be growing feathers soon enough. Well, truth be told, I didn't take the idea seriously at first. But thinking about it, it would make it easier to get around if I had Ambrosia here. <sighs> if you're sure that's what you want. The 
tributary says where to treat you lot as we would each other. So, if you need me to ferry your bird over, then that's what I'll do. Still, if they don't take the water easily, I'll need you to bring us a mimic gourd or two to keep her calm on the journey over. And, uh, where would I find one of those? Oh, don't ask me. It's been years since I last brought a chocobo across the bay, and I'm told the world's changed a fair bit since then. Where do you usually get your stable supplies from? Well, the man who made Ambrosius Tack lived in Martha's Rest, and... If I remember correctly, he traded in Chocobo feed too, so I suppose I'll go and ask him. I'll be sailing over to Northreach soon to pick up some supplies. While I do that, you collect your bird and your gourd, and then meet me by the shore. Remember you? You're the one who saved Whiteheart. She's very well. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. You're the one who saved her. Anyway, what brings you to the rest today? I was hoping to purchase a Mimit Gourd, and I thought you might be able to tell me where I could find one. Oh, reckon I could do better than that. Just so happens, I've got a whole carload of the blasted things. Really? Aye, you'd be doing me a favor taking a few off my hands before they turn to mush. But just be on the lookout for wild birds, eh? <laughs> I will. Oh, you're very welcome. Any friend of Whiteheart is a friend of mine. And in times like these, friends have got to stick together. We certainly do. Northridge, then. We'd want to keep Manda's father waiting. Now might I help the garrison to Haven't seen any of those beastly Do be careful. I will. Ready, go. Faster. Thanks, girl. This must be Ambrosia, was it? Oh, she's a real beauty, isn't she? I have the mimic or two. Here. Thank you kindly. As soon as she's gobbled this up, we'll set sail. We're going to take a little trip across the bay now, Ambrosia. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Well, we made it. You did and all? <laughs> she is as white as snow. You're beautiful, aren't you, girl? Brave, too. She was calm as you like on the journey over. The mimic gourd will have played its part, of course, but passing through the walls enough to spook most birds even then. Not this one, though. Ambrosia's been through a lot. I doubt there's much that could unnerve her now. Not with her beloved master by her side. No. It's you who looks after me, isn't it, girl? Anyway, thanks for bringing her here. 
I hope I can breed a bird like her someday. And if you and Ambrosia need ferrying back to Northreach, you only need say the word. Thank you. But I think we might explore Missidia together. What do you say, Ambrosia? You're the outsider. I'm Fanet, healer by tree. And this is Talor, <coughs> one of my patients. He took ill not long after you arrived. Nothing too serious, I hope. I hope so, too. But? This <coughs> affliction, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. He complains of feeling chilled to the bone, but there's no fever to go with it. And my most powerful Antalgic hasn't done a thing to ease the pain in his chest. I'm starting to wonder if his condition might require a different kind of treatment. Shula said that you were here to help us. You couldn't help me. I'd be happy to, if I can. You can. Don't worry. All I need you to do is speak to Talor's son, Pavat, <coughs> over at the forge, and ask if he knows what his father was up to before he came down sick. Something must have caused this, and I want to find out what. The trouble is, Talor's too weak to speak, and I can't leave his side. So while you talk to Pavat, I'll pay his wife word a quick visit, just in case she knows anything. Right. Oh, uh, do you need something? I do, though not from the forge. Fanet asked me to speak with you. She's looking into the cause of your father's illness and wondered if you could shed any light on the matter. I see. Sorry, she shouldn't have dragged you into this. It's no trouble, really. Tell me, did your father do anything out of the ordinary before he fell ill? Not that I know of, but then I hardly see him. He's always out and about, like. Well, at least he was. Suppose he might have been a bit more... fidgety than usual, but apart from that... When you say out and about, where does he usually go? Just round the village. Wanders over to Blazia's place most days. He's a fisher who lives on the other side of the fount. Maybe he knows something I don't... Maybe. I'll go and speak with him. What can I do for you? Your name is Blazir, is it not? Pavard tells me you're a friend of his father's, and that the two of you may have spent some time together prior to his illness. His illness? Talor's never been ill a day in his life. I don't know why he'd start now. Oh, Fanny doesn't know either. It was she who asked me to look into his recent behavior on the off chance it might explain how his condition arose. <sighs> I suppose there was something that struck me as a bit odd. He kept asking about the wood. Did you see anything strange on your way back from the shore? Are you certain? Do you swear? That kind of thing. I didn't, of course. But he wouldn't let it go. It was like he was expecting something to happen. It was just a matter of when. Not that I know what. But he never told me any. Well, that certainly does sound unusual. And it might just be what Fanet is looking for. I don't mention it. Oh, and when you say to law, uh, wish him the best from me, eh? Let's see what the healer makes of this. with word, but she couldn't tell me anything. Nothing conclusive. But there was one thing. Blazir, the fisherman, 
told me that Talor had taken a sudden interest in the forest of late. He kept asking him if he'd seen anything unusual there on his way back from the coast, but never let on what exactly he was expecting him to have seen. The forest. Between here and the core. Surely not. But then... I can't say for sure. But I think Talor's illness might have some connection to the Tombury. You may have encountered them during your time here. The small, scaly basement. And you think they may have caused Talor's illness? I do. At least in a way. And if I'm right, it's no wonder the treatments I've been trying didn't work. Oh, no, it's a lot to ask. But would you go down into Father's Fell for me? There's an altar there. And if my fears are true and offering upon it... What is going on here? Please. I'll explain everything when you return, but time flows fast. I beg you, make haste for Father's Fell and take the offering from the altar. Very well. <laughs> Bastard things. Oh, I never should have let him go alone. And once everyone left me in peace. Before we turned east at the shipwrecks to reach the coast. Now we must head in the opposite direction. Left it is then. One thing I know about beastmen is that they love to hide in the dark. What are they up to? Some sort of ritual? Sorry to disturb you. Let's see what's on this altar, then. A silver chain. I doubt the Tombrys made it. This must be what Fennet was talking about. back well did you find anything I did this silver chain I knew it well I'm still none the wiser forgive me this chain it's a Gregorian Matanoster worn by men of the faith what's it doing here and why would the Tombrys be praying to it? To understand that, you need to understand what the Tombrys are. They feed on hatred and suffering. And some say that if you render them an offering, some token of grievance against your fellow man, they will put a curse upon him. So you think someone's put a Tombry curse on Talor? I, uh, 
I can't say for sure. Truth be told, I always assumed it was an old wives' tale. But given his fear of the forest and the presence of the chain on the altar, I don't know what else to think. Does Talor have any enemies in the village? Anyone who would nurse such a grudge? No. No, I believe the one who left the chain at the altar was Talor himself. I beg your pardon. But there's more to the tale, you see. It's said that if you attempt to curse a soul that has returned to the sea already, your ire has nowhere to go but back to its source. You're saying he cursed himself? In trying to curse another, I. When my father was younger, he was one of the few permitted to venture beyond the wall on trading expeditions. He told us that when he journeyed to Sandbreck, he'd wear that chain to disguise his true beliefs, lest Grieger's faithful turn their cudgels on him. Did they ever catch him in his deception? Might that explain the ill will he bears someone? Not that he ever told me. Come now. Let's not waste time speculating about Talor's past. We need to focus on the present, and that means finding a way to break the curse. All right. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Thank you. Aye, and thanks for going to all this trouble. Here, it's not much, but I, I want you to have this. We call it an adder stone. It's a gatherer's charm. Reacts to certain rare minerals we use in crafting. Makes them ring out like a bell. So if you find anything, see that you bring it back to me. I can make you some decent gear. I am, thank you. And I'll be sure to pay you a visit. Until then, I wish your father a swift recovery. And my steel's just as good as any. Oh, I never. 
never should have let him go alone. Ty, take me. What am I going to do? You. You've got to help me. Shula said you were a force to be reckoned with, are you? Uh, why do you ask? Hey? Oh, sorry. I, I should explain. My name's Kitab. I'm worried about a friend of mine. He went into the forest and he hasn't come back. Would you help me find? I can try. Of course. You know about the glamour our ancestors cast to keep this place hidden, right? Shula told us about it. Right. So you know the cairns we use to maintain the spell? Well, it's me and my friend's job to maintain them. If it weren't for the likes of us, it would have faded years ago. So your friend went into the forest to visit one of these cairns? Aye, that's right. He said he was going down to Father's Fell. There are two cairns out that way, one by the banks of the Swift Run and another near the Winged Wains, the, uh, ships in the forest. All right. How will I know this friend of you? His name's Nasef. He's about my height, but clean-shaven. If you could track him down and see that he's come to no harm, I'd be much obliged. I'll search the village, just in case anyone's seen him, and meet you back here. Very well. One came by the ships, another by the river. Better get moving. Come on. Here's the can. But no sign of Nasef. To the riverbank, then. Looking for a man named Nasser. Hi, I know him. Takes care of the cans. Wait, you didn't think I was him, did you? Sorry, mate. I'm just out to gym me sell a few ibex. What do you want with the lad, anyway? Uh, uh, his friend Katav asked me to look for him. Apparently, he ventured out to work on one of these cans and didn't return. Well, that is a worry. You're a hunter, yes. You must know the woods as well as anyone. Can you think where he might have gone? Uh, there's a bridge further down the path. Blasted thing got washed away a few moons back. Our carpenter only recently had time to rebuild it. But if I remember rightly, there is another cairn on the far side. Maybe he decided to visit that one while he was here. Maybe. It's worth a look, certainly. Don't mention it. I'll keep an eye out, too. Perhaps he just got delayed or something. Let's hope so. This must be the bridge the hunter was talking about.
It's over! Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm the tributary's guest. And you must be NASA. I am? But how do you know? Your friend Katav asked me to look for you when you didn't return. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I was so focused on attuning the cairn, I didn't see those creatures come until it was too late. How exactly do they work? Oh, that there are crystals inside. They're what keeps the glamour going. Should the ether cease to flow through too many of them, our shroud would quickly unravel. It's my job to make sure that doesn't happen. And an important job it is. But you'll struggle to do it if you're dead. You need to take more care. Yeah. The truth is, me and Katav usually work together, watching each other's backs like. But when we heard outsiders were coming, we split up to get the job done faster, so things will be perfect for your arrival. So you found him then? Not before the local fauna did. My arrival seemed to put them off their dinner. <laughs> Mustn't have been hungry after all. Expect you'll be wanting someone to escort you back to the village then, Nasef. The woods are full of nasties today. When you're next in Haven, be sure to come and see us. You saved my life. It's only right I repay you. If you insist. Take care now. I'd lost you, but you saw to it. Thank you. Nasef told me everything. If you hadn't got there when you did... Oh, it doesn't bear thinking about... All that matters is that you're so far be it from me to tell you how to do your jobs, but... Don't go alone again. Or if we have to. Maybe we should think about casting the glamour on ourselves to keep the wildlife from spotting us. It'd take its toll, of course but it'd beat letting the cairns fall and having to weave the entire spell from scratch. <laughs> I'd rather not. We'd only succeed in adding two new piles of stone to the collection. Your bearers. That we are, thank the tides. The others can't attune to the crystals in the cairns the same way we can. I reckon this place would be doomed without us. So, you do this work for the good of your people? We're forced to. No. From what I've heard of the way things work on the outside, we were truly blessed that our rain fell here in Mycidia. Our people are few enough as it is. If we started turning on each other, kin against kin, over nothing but a stupid accident of birth, our days would be numbered. They would. Anyway, all's well that ends well, eh? Thanks to you, both of us live to keep this place hidden another day. with which I would beg your aid. Of course, what is it? Please, not so loud. Something serious then? Yes. I think we might have company. I was passing by the low gate when I saw a figure moving among the trees upon the cloak. At first I thought it must have been you or your brother, so I didn't say anything, but, but the more I think about it, the more certain I am that the figure looked Familiar. Then you're sure it wasn't one of the other villagers? Positive. I think it was someone from outside the wall who has found his way inside. Of course, it could just be my imagination playing tricks on me. I only caught a fleeting glimpse, and it might have been you or your brother. But if it is who I think it is, we cannot allow him to leave now that he knows we're here. Would you go and see? Or he won't try to hurt you. 
Believe me. Given what lurks in the forest, the only one likely to get hurt is him. Very well. Whether the man... Perhaps. Just promise me that if you do find someone up there... Don't worry. I won't draw my sword unless I need to. Thank you. Yamila, this man you saw, might he be the customer you told me of? I fear so. A customer? I'll explain later. Too many of the flowers that won't be of the arbor perfume from Sambrag. looks expensive too who's there stop than all right. I'm saved! Oh, I could kiss you! Maybe you should introduce yourself first. Hervey! I knew it was you! What are you doing here? I came to see you. Oh, my little canary, it's been so long. Thank you for saving him. Who is he? Hervey. One of many clients from my employment beyond the wall. One of many clients? We spoke every night of our plans together. Whispered songs of love into each other's ears. And then you upped and vanished without so much as a word. I left you a note, didn't I? I told you I was sorry, but that we could never be together. That I could never abandon my family. And I told you not to look for me. How did you even find this place, anyway? The flame of your love was as a beacon in the night that guided me to you. Hervey. Uh, I was walking by the coast near Northreach when I saw a lady who looked like you. Eyes like the ocean. Hair like the driven snow. The next moment, she and her companions were jumping in a skiff and sailing out towards the wave. So I... Uh, Borrowed the nearest boat and started rowing. It must have been Shula bringing us here. So what? You rowed, found a nose how many leagues across the bay, simply because you saw a woman with white hair. And as I did, 
The skies changed from a dull and hopeless gray to a bright and benevolent blue. That was when I knew for certain that my little canary was close. Oh, why did you come? You should have forgotten me as I tried to forget you. I cannot leave my people, Hervé. And now that you know about this place, neither can you. We must return to Haven and accept my family's judgment. I'm to meet your family. Oh, my little canary. <sighs> Please, come and see me later. You did as I asked, and you must be rewarded for it. But first, follow me, Hervé. Ah, to the end of the world and beyond. You should never have found this place. How could I be so careless? Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. You two met at the Vale, I take it. When I worked there, yes. To earn the coin that my people need to survive. Though Mycidia is our sanctuary, there are certain necessities that it cannot provide. And, and so you supported your family as best? I did. And I have never regretted it for a moment. I found a second family in the Vale, and in the Dame, a second mother. I also found Hervey, but our love could never be. I knew that if I revealed my secret to him, I would be putting my people in danger. But that if I did not, I would be living a lie, unable to return home. What will happen to him now? Since our people settled in Mesidia, uninvited visitors have been few and far between, but not unknown. Explorers, survivors of shipwrecks, none lasted long. I see. That was before my time, you understand. I've never had to make a decision like this before. Yamila, know that I do not blame you for any of this. It was me who decided to make the trip to shore. Me who exposed our secret. This was my mistake. And I shall bear the responsibility. Thank you, Tributary. I only hope... I only beg you to remember that Hervé means us no ill will. He's just a fool. A fool who loves me. I will take that into consideration. But yours is not the only voice I must listen to. The whole family must be consulted, and it may take time for me to arrive at my decision. I hope you understand. Of course, Tributary. However long it take. Come what may, I thank you, my lord, for bringing us back together. Come on.
There's a large gate up ahead, and beyond it, a cluster of ancient ruins. The temple, or the heir of ours as my people call it, can only be reached by passing through them. The forest is crawling with life, most of it hungry, which is why we make sure this gate stays shut. And why you carry that impressive looking axe, I presume? Hmm. Noticed her, have you? The temple is up there. Don't worry, those cliffs aren't the only way to the top. Let's go. Yeah! the ruins yes as far as we can tell they're part of the same complex as the temple itself to think of all the people who must once have lived here these remind me of home you're from the north then yes Do you see that cave up ahead? Whoever lived here carved a flight of stairs into the stone with it. Away to the top. And whatever it is that awaits us there. There, the temple the time forgot. And the various inside. Yes, you can see the spell's path from the nave. Why build the Vare here? The spell was originally meant to be cast on Drake's eye, and this was the only place with an unbroken line of sight. The Tonbury's like to think these ruins are their own. They look not too pleased to see us. Increase, as if they were feeding off our suffering.
Could this be their leader? You're more than welcome to us. me anything is that there's always something worse.
Is that the knife? Just inside the dome, yes. But it's what's out here that worries me. Just like the surge. Hmm. Another of my ancestors' sins. Shall we? Blue Veil shows the extent of the spell's reach. But I can feel its ether from here. Shula, wait. Before we cross the threshold, I'd like to know a little more about how these magics work. I assume we'll be safe from their influence. We won't grind to a halt, if that's what you mean. The spell only affects the things that were present at the moment it was cast. But if 
we can enter. That means other things can as well. Like the ones we saw on the way here. And worse, probably. Is this Leviathan's doing? Well, it certainly wasn't ours. When he realized my ancestors were attempting to cast a spell from here, he made to destroy the temple. And almost did by the looks of it.
imagine what this place must have been like before the attack. This would have been a hall of worship. There was something similar in my father's keep. The priests would deliver their sermons from the dais. Your father? Just as I thought. Jill, does this ether not feel somehow... Familiar, yes. I sensed it the moment we arrived, though I wasn't sure until now. You can feel it too, can't you, Clive? She's calling us. You don't mean the witch? I do. Though she was more than that. Much more. She was a dominant. A dominant who once commanded the icon that now resides in both me and Clive. Of course. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't see it. Who else would have the power to freeze time? None other than Shiva herself. For her ether to endure after all these years, it, it's almost as if...
As if she shared it with another, just as Torgal shared in my ice.
Let's destroy it and put an end to this. Wait. The spell must be weakened, not undone. Uh, isn't that what we came here for? Did you ever stop to wonder what might happen to the tidal surge if I unraveled the whole spell at once? I didn't think so. This is going to require a bit more. From wind and light, water and earth, let the silent pour of my ice. I think so. The thread connecting this place to the child should be broken. Meaning Walias should finally be... Free once more. Leviathan. Our most profaned fragment. Its divinity defiled by the hand of man. Its spirit shackled by his hubris, till Mythos came, bringing release. Now, let the sins of man be redeemed by the hand of the servant of God.
What is? What's going on? Precisely what we feared. Leviathan is out of control.
isn't what I wanted. I only hope you can forgive me.
Now that was quite a tantrum. Clive, where is he? Well, yes. Ago. <laughs> Clive, I... I don't know how to thank you. It's all right. We should find him a dry blanket, though. On the little monster catching a cold. There. He's finally asleep. The poor thing had a long day. That makes two of us. So... What happens now? Now? Now, we make things right. How? by providing Walias what he was denied. A place to learn and grow. A family to love and protect him. So that one day, when the wounds in his heart and mind have finally healed, he might decide for himself how he'd like to live the rest of his life. But until then, I'll stay by his side, come what may. Then he's a lucky boy. And not only because he'll have the best warrior this side of the belt to teach him the battle axe. Hm. She'll do her best. Shula. The beast that threatened your home is tamed. The empire that threatened your people toppled. Might it not be time to cast off your ancestors' glamour and retake your place in the twins? Perhaps. It's not as if we have the crystals to maintain the wall much longer. But are we truly safe? Is the world truly ready to accept us for who we are and what we believe? If I remember rightly, you and yours still choose to remain hidden, do you not? We do. Well, your people will always be welcome in Haven, regardless. As will yours in the hideaway. We're allies now. If there's anything you need from us, supplies, food, equipment, do not hesitate to ask. It's kind of you to offer. But we'll manage, just as we always have. Besides, I suspect you'll be needing everything at your disposal if you're going to save the world. I fear much of it is past saving. The best we can do is strive to turn what's left into a world where we can all live as equals. A noble endeavor. And there'll be a place in this world for us, will there? For Walias. For everyone. I swear it. Then we shall be waiting until the tides bear you back to shore.
Do you think he'll be all right? Well, yes. Only time will tell. But I can certainly think of worse places to spend one's childhood. The moats of water are a fine people, and they will take good care of him. Up by the Vare, Ultima spoke to me. She called Leviathan his most profaned fragment, and told me to redeem the sins that had laid him low. Is that so? The sins of Walius's ancestors were grave indeed. To force him to prime at so tender an age. And to freeze him in time. That he might never know what it was to live. Yet I doubt either of those crimes was the source of Ultima's displeasure. It was that the Icon's power had been put to another purpose than the one he intended. To him, Leviathan must have seemed an aberration. Could that be why Ultima made no attempt to lead me to him? The fear that this profaned fragment might corrupt his vessel somehow? Perhaps. Or perhaps he simply deemed Leviathan surplus to requirements. Having concluded that his vessel might be made to serve his purposes without the full sum of his power. His purposes? There's no escaping them. Even here. Hidden away in Mesidia, the blessing of the crystals proved nothing but a prison. A prison into which Walius was born, and from which freedom is hard won. If the world doesn't change, if we don't change it, he'll end up suffering the same fate as every dominant who came before him. Then we must change it. That we must. And we shall. <laughs>